Assalamu alaikum ji greetings and welcome to light up with shwa podcast my name is shwa and i have two very special guests so i welcome dr ifat and dr sara to light up with shwa podcast and i hope uh, you will spread your and our conversation to people who would benefit from it so please introduce yourselves whoever wants to go first and then let us know who you are and what do you do uh sure thank you thank you shwa for having us and it's it's great to be joining you today uh my name is dr sara sekhuram i'm the ceo and co-founder of sehat kahani i am a medical doctor by profession i'm a mother of two girls and uh, i'm a young global leader by world economic forum I am a Mulago Ackerman Rail Nagar Fellow. Um, I've done my bachelor's in medicine and then my um, MPH from Aachen University. And I have been running Sehat Kahani with Dr. Ifat for the last seven years now. So I'm Dr. Ifat Zafaraga. I'm also a medical uh, doctor by profession. I did my medicine from Zawaddin and I did my MSc from University of Edinburgh. I'm a Commonwealth scholar, a Global Good Fund Fellow. And I think um, the work that we've We've been doing through Sehat Kahani. We've been able to, in our respective journeys, make some change for a lot of women and a lot of patients. And I think that's what makes us proud. And you know, motivated to do it the same way every day. So, true, yeah. true. Thank you so much. I mean, so, does this mean that you are still practicing doctors as well, or is it like the field is the same? And how does it work uh, with this? So, so we both are doctors, but since we found Sehat Kahani, I think we live, breathe Sehat <laughs> Kahani. Um, we built it from a two-people organization to a three-hundred-people organization. Um, so I think hours in a day are less uh, yeah. when we start counting working on our own company. Hmm. Uh, so we are there for family and friends as doctors as well. But uh, I think for Sehat Kahani, majority of our working part is dedicated to building Sehat Kahani and growing it. So now we would like to know what is Sehat Kahani like? What do you do with it? Sure. Um, so Sehat Kahani is a digital healthcare organization, and there are two. reasons why we created sehat kahani uh so the first reason is that we both are medical doctors but there's another commonality between me and ifa that we both are women doctors and women doctors in pakistan face a very big challenge which is called the doctor bride phenomenon hmm. so if you talk about some numbers there are around 240000 doctors around 80% of more or more of our workforce is made up of women that's great but unfortunately half of this workforce never practices because what happens is once they become a doctor their degree stands hanging on a wall and they get married or they start having children and they are made to choose or they choose out of guilt between having a career and a family and yeah. a lot of people choose a latter huh. so what it does in our ecosystem of health is we are now left with less than less than half a doctor for 1000 patients yeah. uh, pakistan is also the fifth largest population in the world and 150 million of us half of the population never gets to see a doctor in their lifetime if you're living in a low income area if you're a woman if you're a child if you're an elderly you're disproportionately affected and access quality affordability to healthcare mm-hmm. is a question for many in our country so what we did was we took this doctor bride phenomena and we said that if the woman doctor sure. cannot go out of the houses to work how can we bring the patient to that woman doctor in our home and that's when we created sehat kahani which is a digital healthcare platform that connects predominantly women doctors across the globe to patients in pakistan who need quality affordable healthcare using an ai enabled chat audio video consultation platform that allows doctor patient consultations within the app um enables a person to order their medicine enables a person to book their lab enables a person to manage their claims through insurance enables a person to do home health care for their loved ones so in totality we are now running seven platforms within sehat kahani catering to different populations hmm. but the ethos is to provide a qualified doctor to a patient in pakistan who did not have access to qualified doctors or affordable doctors before this initiative was born so they can then this is their practice while they are you know that it's online through virtual method so those doctors are qualified to practice it means 
So when a doctor comes on Sehat Kahani platform, we have really stringent criteria to recruit them. Hmm. So we make sure every doctor who joins the platform, they should not be out of work for some more than three years. They should have a minimum hmm. experience of three years. Hmm. And when they join Sehat Kahani platform, it's their, you know, starting from their PMDC license, from their hmm. other medical credentials, all of that are scanned uh, through our proper team, the doctor network management team. Uh-huh. that we've created an OLP, an online learning management platform, uh-huh. which uh, ensures that all of those doctors, particularly general physicians, undergo certain medical courses of ailments which they will be seeing more and more in their daily practice. With every course, there's a uh-huh. quiz. And they have to score at least 65% or above to be able to, and once they go through all of those courses on OLP, that's when we put them on the different platforms to practice. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it is monitored. It is not just like taking a doctor and putting them there. And Okay. So well. well healthcare. Oh. So you cannot uh, take risk with people. Yeah, lives. that's true. That's true. So any any glitches in that? Anything that you face uh, or I'm sure you're those impediments, how do you remove them? Uh, in brief, if you can give our people to think about, okay, they don't have to worry and they can rely on this system. Yeah. So I think um, while we were building this digital healthcare platform and we started in 2017, this is pre-COVID and pre-work from home phenomenon. Mm. So there were a lot of challenges. Uh, we initially started as an organization that creates clinics in low-income areas. So we take a clinic, which is already run by a midwife, mm-hmm. and then implement our telemedicine solution in that clinic. So then when a patient walks in, that midwife or that lady healthcare visitor connects that patient to an online doctor. Now, when you're creating a clinic in a low-income community, obviously there are a lot of challenges. Internet can be a challenge, electricity can be a challenge. And most of all, acceptability to a video conferencing doctor mm, that's is a huge challenge. But how cultural do you trust a- cultural uh, mindset and all that, yeah. Exactly. So how do you trust that woman that if she is a doctor and if she can treat you better than a quack who's sitting next door, but is sitting in person? And I think that involved really upgrading the clinic with a process that we installed electricity, we installed internet backups, internet devices, a lot of training goes into the nurse or that healthcare worker. Mm-hmm. She's our main voice and she's the main body of the clinic. And we we take someone who's been in that community for the last seven to eight years so that people know her and people come to her and she's the one who tells the patients that, okay, this is now another service available for you that will help you to take a better consultation. Mm. Over time, that trust is built by one and one thing only, good quality practice. Because when people get better, then they go back into their communities and they tell other people that they got better and then they can come back. And that's how the flow is created. Yeah. So our clinics really worked from educating the patient, mobilizing the patient and with good quality care. Um, between 2017 to 2019, we ran the network of clinics, but then 2019 onwards, we also added a mobile application for the masses and for the urban users. And this is essentially what we do in the clinics, but here there's no nurse. So you can download the application as a smartphone user in an urban mm-hmm. city. You can connect to a doctor. Mm. Now, one interesting feature that we added in our app is that you can connect to a doctor in less than 60 seconds, which means that the doctor is available online. Mm -hmm. And you can just come into the app and connect immediately. Now, when you make such a big claim, obviously you need to have enough processes to back it. So of course, you know, there are issues that sometimes the call is missed or the doctor does not pick up. Mm -hmm. So what we did, was this has been our secret sauce since a long time, that we've created a call support system in case our doctor does not pick up your call or if Mm -hmm. there are any technical issues on the app. We have a 24-7 helpline. You can call in and you will be connected to an alternative doctor in less than 15 minutes. Mm. We will also take your feedback within 24 hours. We will remind you of your appointments. We will make sure that you're sorted as a customer when you're coming on the app. So Sehat Kahani app is today used by 1.5 million users. Mm. Uh, It is the most prominent corporate app in Pakistan and and 860 corporates are using it for their employees and families coupled with insurance. Um, now, when you're handling such a big base, then comes the challenge of creating enough supply and enough demand. Mm. So over time, we've recruited over 7,500 doctors in our network, from which we instill new doctors on our application, seeing the trend. 
So it was very important for us to manage the operations immaculately. And that's when our team comes in. We have a corporate sales team. We have key accounts team. We have customer support team. We have an in-house technology team. So we've really built up mm. the process from scratch to this point so that we can handle such a big operation as well. Wow. Beautiful. That's impressive. <laughs> Is this uh, for anybody, for everybody? Doesn't matter what socioeconomic background she Absolutely. or he is. Yeah. So I think everybody can use it right now. As I mentioned, our application currently is being used in 317 plus cities and towns across Pakistan. Oh. And not just across Pakistan. While this is a product that we created for Pakistan organically, it's being mm -hmm. used in a lot of other cities as well. Particularly mm -hmm. due to COVID, we mm -hmm. saw a lot of even in countries such as, you know, India, Philippines, Nepal, sure. and, you know, being a Pakistani when it was used in India, I was really proud that, okay. That's very nice. Yeah. yeah. It's serving yeah. others. The main thing is serving humanity. Yeah. Uh -huh. What we've done is the application is very simple to use. It's uh -huh. very visual. So uh -huh. a lot of the prompts when they, anyone logs in are easily understandable. Uh -huh. And on top of that, what we've done is there's an Urdu toggle as well. So if, for example, someone does not understand English or they want to know more of what this uh -huh. application uh -huh. is, they can do it in Urdu. Uh -huh. So it has both the languages? Yeah. Absolutely. It has both okay. the languages. Okay. Uh, Sehat Kahani is the only digital healthcare solution in Pakistan that has three products available for three markets. Yeah. So we have a corporate app that's used by corporate employees and their families. Okay. Yeah. And, hmm. and as I said, it's, it's the largest corporate app used. Mm -hmm. We have a consumer app. So someone like your mother will download our consumer app. Hmm. And then she will have all the services available in the app and she just has to pay for it. Right. Um, said it's very easy to use, available hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. Medicines, you can book your labs and you can consult with a doctor. So it's a one-stop primary healthcare shop for any hmm. patient in Bath. And then for low-income areas where people don't have access to smartphones, mm -hmm. there we have created these physical centers yeah. uh -huh. where people can uh -huh. log in and get connected to a doctor. And even if this doesn't work, so the app doesn't work or the clinic you can't go into, we also have a helpline, 24-7 yeah. helpline where you can call in and you can get connected to a doctor on call. Because see, the secret Mashallah. source is Very nice. that patient to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Technology is an enabler. Exactly. But technology also has kind of restriction sometimes true so how can we make sure that that doctor is being connected to that patient and that's why mm -hmm. we've, can, we've created these different service lines for different customers as well uh -huh. as backup service lines true. so that we can maintain that connection at all times even if technology fails us yeah and i think just you know building on that as uh, sarah mentioned 860 companies use this service yeah so for us it's a paid service by every organization mm -hmm. so i think what has been really different from us or any other player in the market is that we work with organizations or insurance providers and they pay us or they take the service for their employees, hmm. you know, whether they want to take it on a monthly, quarterly, hmm. or annual basis. And the individual families and their, uh, you know, uh, respective employees can use this uh, unlimited for that designated period. Uh -huh. And this includes different tiers. So when you look at an organization who's using our service, uh -huh. you'll also see their CEOs, their presidents using this. You'll also see their middle management using it. But you'll also see their you know, lower management, um, all of them using this yes. service. These are the two apps that we have. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So we can, I will try to download and let my family know and every all the friends know. That's very good. I mean, I'm going to check it out. I think we have a big team. Yeah. Uh, we have amazing people in the team who have been our support system since day one. Uh -huh. We have an amazing network of doctors. Yeah. And, and this is really this is really all them. Uh, we are mobilizing them, yeah. giving them confidence to, to work from their homes. But mm. some of the stories of the women doctors who yeah. started practicing, many of them were facing domestic abuse, mental health issues. Because if you're a woman doctor and you've studied 20 years for something and you don't get to practice, that takes a toll on your mental health, yes. your self esteem self-worth. Yeah, and imagine you start working from home, you start creating money, you have hmm. financial independence, yeah. you have social independence, you connect with the community and you are connected to the cause or the, or the vision that you were brought up with that you will help people. Majority of our doctors working from outside Pakistan never have been to the communities that they're working with. But they're so committed that they still come every day to yeah. see their patients. 
I think that's what technology does. It True. creates an enablement and also removes that barrier of geography. Um, and and create something beautiful between that that nurse or that patient or that patient or that doctor. Uh, that's amazing to see every day. What is that um, out of all this serious work that you do? <laughs> <laughs>